Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome. And thank you so much for joining us today for this, these demo lessons for secondary school. So I can see that people are beginning to join and welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Carlisa Johnson and I'm the marketing director for Boom Cards. And we're very excited to be partnering today with three wonderful secondary educators. Um, so thank you to Liesl, Sarah, and Michelle. It's great to have you here, and we love to get to know the attendees as well. So please feel free to share where you're watching from and the subject that you teach. And you can do that in the chat. Uh, you'll see it at the bottom of your screen. It'll just be a little speech bubble that says chat, and you can just type in where you're from. And uh, let's see, we want to let you know that we are recording this and live streaming it to YouTube. So you'll also be able to find the recording on our YouTube channel later. Um, and we will be sending a follow up recording to your email uh, tomorrow if you registered. So don't worry about catching every little thing. You'll have the recording to refer back to. We also have a Q&A box. Um, you'll see that in the same uh, panel that you saw the chat button. If you post your questions to the Q&A box, then everybody will get to see your question and we can even answer it live at the end of the demo lessons. So hello, I see Newfoundland, California, New Mexico, Denver. Um, I'm in Washington today and then we have panelists from as far as South Africa. So that's very exciting and it's great to have everyone here today. Um, let's go over what we're going to cover as an SAT and ACT tutor. I know that I personally always struggled to find a way to present really complex topics um, and still keep it engaging, fun, memorable, still keep it feeling like a game, even as the um, topics became more and more complex. So today we're going to get helpful ideas for how to do just that. And first, I'm going to turn it over to Liesl, who's from Cape Town, South Africa. She's been teaching biology and chemistry for 21 years, and she'll show you how she uses boom cards. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone. Um, it's wonderful to join you all here from Cape Town. Um, I have to apologize. We are in the middle of a power outage, so it's a bit dark. And if I disappear, it's not because I don't like you. It's just that everything has died around me. But let's hope we can get through it all. OK. Um, Barry, you will have to stop sharing your screen so that I can share. It won't allow me to share otherwise. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. OK, right. Let's jump right in. OK, so I'm going to just talk a bit about how I use boom cards in my high school. Um, right, so a little bit about me. Um, so like Corey said, I'm a biology and chemistry teacher and I've been teaching for 21 years. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, and I've taught in both the UK and in South Africa. So currently I live in South Africa with my husband and daughter who's on the picture there and the hamster in the cage, <laughs> you can't see. Um, I'm the owner of the lab. Um, so I sell biology and chemistry resources and I love reading. I'm obsessed with Harry Potter and I'm a coffee addict. I can't go without four or five cups a day at least. Right. Um, so I often get asked, are boom cards actually suitable for high school students? And the answer for me is absolutely yes. They act all big and know it all and we're adults. But you know what? They actually little kids at heart still and they love a good game and they're extremely competitive. I had one of my students actually come to me this morning. She's like, Liesl, um, they call me by my first name because I'm at the Montessori school. Um, she's like, Liesl, I love this, but I had to remove my nails that I had on because I keep on pressing the wrong thing. And I was sitting on the weekend waiting for my friend outside her house before we went out. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to try and beat my score on the one set of cards. And I'm like, yes, you special child, you. But they absolutely love it. And they're just trying to get a new avatar or um, things. So it's a really, really good motivator. So how I use boom cards, um, three main things. I would use it at the start of a unit. 
I will use it for review and then of course as a sub plan. So I'll just quickly go through each of those, show you some examples of what I do. Um, and hopefully you, you get some ideas. Okay, so um, start of a unit. We all know whatever they learned last year disappears over summer. Like it diffuses out of their brains. They look at you like they've never heard this before. So I often, before I start a unit, will tell them just go through this deck of boom cards again, check that you still remember what we talked about last year or in the previous unit. And that's also a very good way for me to identify gaps. Are there certain bits I need to reteach or are we good to just carry on? And often they will tell me before, no, we've, we've never seen this before, we haven't done it. And once I've gone through a card, they will be like, oh yeah, you actually did mention this last year. So I find that very, very useful. And then always um, when we get new students coming from different schools, perhaps doing a different curriculum, um, it's easy to just get a quick idea of where they're at, what they've done, um, instead of doing like a formal test or assessment. So um, for me, that is really, really useful. The one deck of mine that I do assign every single year at the beginning of the year, I'm like, you're going to go through this again, is chemical formulas. Um, because it's the one thing they struggle with. Now, let's hope that this is, the internet is fast enough for me to actually <laughs> load this now. Uh, my Wi-Fi is cooperating. Okay, here we go. So this is um, my one deck on chemical formulas. And it's just basic recall. It's not testing analysis or conclusions or anything like that. Most of my decks, I use um, lower order thinking. I just want to see what they know. We'll get to the more in-depth analysis and things like that later on. So um, bottom of Bloom's taxonomy, keep it basic just to get an idea. So for example, with your chemical formula, just testing, can they quickly recognize the things that they should? So for example, our asset um, or those ones. So there's just like a whole deck, just going through these things, getting them just to practice. Um, obviously a lot of these, they will be able or should, <laughs> I should say, be able to figure out, but a lot of them, it's a real time saver if they can just identify it. Right, okay, let me go back to this um, slide. A second way in which I do use boom cards quite a lot, and I'm currently doing this with my students is as a review. Um, so as you, I've said earlier, I'm in South Africa. So we are in our second semester of the school year um, and we are moving towards exams now. Um, I teach at the Cambridge School, so we follow the Cambridge curriculum. So the exam series starts in October, it's quite intense. And at this point, I need to really identify gaps. I need to know if there are anything um, that I need to go through again. So what I do is I bulk assign. So with that, I mean, I will assign 10, 15 decks to a class. And that will be their responsibility to do if and when. I always tell them it's not homework, it's not for a mark, it's for you to see what you know. Um, and they love that. The fact that they don't have to do something means they usually end up doing it. Um, so they can work through those at their own time, at their own pace. They can identify gaps. They can tell me, can I get a lesson on this topic again? Can we go through this section again? And it also holds them accountable um, and it's also useful for parent feedback. So when a parent comes to me and it's like, my child needs extra help on X, Y, Z. And I'm going to be like, well, here you can see I've assigned your child these decks. They haven't even looked at it. Or yes, actually, I can see they've been working on this consistently. Obviously, there is something we need to go through again. So um, that feedback, that back end where you can see what they've been doing, how often they've been doing it, when last were they on, is really, really helpful um, when you communicate with parents as well. Um, so an example of a deck that I've assigned to them now is enzymes for my biology students. 
once again, we're just waiting on the wonderful internet that's taking its sweet time. Okay, there we go. So like I said previously, this is not the high level exam questions. We'll practice those with past papers, etc. This is just, do you know the content? Because if you don't know the content, you can't move on to higher level questions. So um, basic things that they do need to memorize, that they do need to know on these topics. Um, just, yeah, nothing too complicated. Um, just, do you know this? Um, in most of my decks, I do include different types of things. So you've seen previously, it will be multiple choice, pick the correct one. Here it's actually images and they have to go and select the correct image. Um, like this one as well. So I try to include a variety of question types of activities in these. Um, in some of my other decks, there's lots of drop and drag options. There are some cases where they actually have to type in the equation or type in numbers to balance equations and that type of thing as well. Okay, right. And then um, probably my favorite <laughs> way of using boom cards is using it as a sub plan. One, it's no prep and there's no grading afterwards because there's nothing worse than getting back to school after you've been gone and there's a mountain of paperwork and assignments waiting for you to mark. Um, so with subplans, I have two decks that is kind of my backup. So it doesn't matter what subject, what grade, they can do it. Um, and it's uh, really useful to have those general kind of topics to do. So something like lab equipment is one of my free decks. Like that one is always a good go-to because if I have to see a cup instead of a beaker or a test tube again, I might scream. But um, another or two other decks that I do use a lot is my Latin and Greek roots, um, which just is always a good thing for them to know or understand the language and science um, so they can practice those. Like I say, it doesn't matter what topic you're teaching. It doesn't matter if it's physics, chemistry, maths. It's it's useful a useful skill to have. Um, so I do like assigning these for that reason. And then I have like color by numbers that are similar to this. So when they're done with that, with the boom cards, they can move on to that um, just to reinforce that. Um, so they do enjoy these and it sometimes takes them quite a bit of time to actually figure these out. Sometimes they have to go and do some research and then they would redo the decks to try and increase or yeah, increase their speed, get a higher score. And like I said, it becomes very, very competitive at times. It's quite entertaining to watch. <laughs> okay, um, so that's me. Uh, you can contact me on my website. Um, I'm on Instagram. Yeah, that's main places you will find me. If you've got any questions, if you've got any ideas, um, requests for boom cards, I'm at this point where my students will come to me and say, like, oh, well, we need a deck on this now. I said to them yesterday, I'm actually going to start employing some of them to create these since they are becoming so demanding. Okay, so that's me. Uh, it, it sounds like you really have a lot of engagement from your students um, and that they're excited and addicted. <laughs> they are. Like, I, I am very, very lucky. Um, like I said, I'm teaching the Montessori school, so we do things slightly differently and it, it's it's wonderful to get that from them and have them respond in that such a positive way to um, boom cards and things so, yeah wonderful well thank you liesel um now we'll hand it off to sarah who's gonna talk about her store uh, named after her daughter kate's math lessons so take it away sarah sure thanks um, let's see Hi everybody, um, my name is Sarah and um, like Carrie said, I named my store uh, Kate's Math Lessons after my daughter. I am a former math teacher. I taught middle school and high school um, for about 10 years <clears throat> and now I work full time online. So I love making, I make mostly digital resources and boom cards are by far my favorite thing to make. Um, so you can, if you are a math teacher and you want to find some of my free re resources, you can find those at katesmathlessons.com. 
Um, you can also find me on social media and you can find me at all my decks at Boom Learning if you just search Kate's Math Lessons. Um, so all the ones I showed today, you can find those um, in Boom's store. So I want to, um, just before I show the demo, I want to just quick talk about why I love Boom Cards so much. Um, I'm one of like the early creators um, and they're my favorite digital activity for a couple of reasons. First, they're no prep. Um, I love that teachers don't have to, you know, get in line at the copier. They don't have to cut and paste anything. They're just easy to assign. Um, I love how easy it is to differentiate them. So if you've got students at different levels, um, I used to teach at an alternative high school for part of my career, and I would have kids, you know, kids come in at really low levels of math. And so I like that I could just adjust, you know, and send them different decks based on where they're at. Um, and I especially love the instant feedback for students, um, especially with math. I think it's so important that kids get that feedback as they're learning a new skill um, as soon as possible. I don't want my kid to do a whole worksheet, you know, and find out the end that they did them all wrong. So I love that Boom has that immediate feedback built in. And then, of course, the automatic grading for teachers is always a bonus. Um, so today I want to look at how to do graphing with Boom cards. Um, if you're a math teacher, you know, graphing is kind of one of those annoying things to grade. It's just kind of tedious to double check those. Um, I love that Boom Cards, you can use interactive elements. So graphing is really easy, like drag and drop. Um, and then it, combine it with the immediate feedback. I love that it can kick a point back. So if they put it in the wrong spot, they can find that out right away. Um, and then I love Boom Cards because I can take a really complex process um, like we're going to look at graphing quadratic equations. There's a lot of steps there, um, but Boom Cards makes it easy to just break that process down into smaller steps so students can get feedback just right from the beginning at each step of the way so they can see how they're doing. Um, so I'm going to pull up one of my decks that I've made here. And this one actually on graphing quadratics, um, there's an option for a printable worksheet. So if you wanted to do this with your whole class, like direct instruction, you could have this printed out and students can fill it out as they're going. Um, I think sometimes, I think writing is always helpful for students as they're learning. So just because they're doing a digital activity doesn't mean they can't be writing at the same time. So I almost always would recommend having some sort of, you know, where they're writing down their steps while they're doing them on Boom Cards. Um, so you could have this printed off and they can go through it um, with you if you want to. Um, so this is the standard equation, um, uh, a quadratic equation. So I would first just go through and say, okay, so we, this is the standard equation. We've got the values of A, B, and C, just to make sure they understand what the actual equation is. And then I try to break it down and first say, okay, if you're going to graph this, I first need to make sure that you understand how to identify those values. So I try to just split it up into smaller chunks um, so I can see where they're at in the process. So they would type right in here and then you can see like if they get one of them wrong and they go to hit Sarah, submit. we're still seeing your graphing with boom cards slide. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, so you might have to switch your window. Switch. Sorry about that. Um, here we go. Is that better? So here they would type in the values of A, B, and C. So here they can see that the three is in front of the X squared. The B this time is a negative four. And then your constant is missing. So if they just get like part of it wrong when they go to type that in, I love that Boom will let them know which parts of their answers are correct and which part is missing or needs to be fixed. So they can go back and fix those. So as it goes farther, I have less like color coding just to kind of like ease into it a little bit better. So once I've um, got it down that they've identified the right values, then we start the actual graphing process. So here's the first actual graphing one. They do the first step. Okay, I've got A, B, and C. So I've got one, four, and three. And then the next step of the graphing process is to identify the axis of symmetry. Here, I like too that Boom lets me put this as a totally separate step because if they get they've got their axis of symmetry in the wrong spot, like they dropped a negative sign, their graph's going to be all sorts of wonky. So I make sure that I try to just divide it up. 
So the opposite of B would be a negative four, and then two times one is just two. And then again, if they make a mistake, like in any of these boxes, I like how Boom just lets them know which part is the part that needs to be fixed. So here I can see that my axis of symmetry is at x equals negative two. Um, and a lot of times in a lot of my Boom decks, I like to include just these like little lesson cards. Um, so I like that Boom is not just all questions. I can add in like notes or reminders or helpful hints. Um, so I try to put those in where I can. So here's just a reminder. Okay, that axis of symmetry is that line, that vertical line that's going to go right down the center of your parabola. So since we know that cuts it in half, I know that that vertex is going to be right on the axis of symmetry. So if I can graph the axis of symmetry, that's going to tell me like the middle point of my graph. So I know that my parabola is either going to come like this, hit the axis right in the middle, or it's going to be upside down this way. Um, so just breaking the, the graphing process down into smaller chunks, and it seems a little less overwhelming for students, I've found, when you do it this way, versus if you just say, okay, graph it, and then they just present the final graph as their answer. So here, I know my vertex is on this line, so I know that x-coordinate is negative 2. So to find the y-coordinate, I just plug in negative 2 for x, so that comes out to negative 1. And then I've got this dot here and they can drag it to anywhere on the graph. So let's say they put it in the wrong spot. When they hit submit, it will kick it back out and make them try again. So I like that I can see, okay, this part's right. I've just got this one in the wrong spot. Now I've got my vertex on there. Um, and then this is just another like review, little lesson card. After you've done all those steps, the next step is just to find more points and plot those so that you can form the rest of your parabola. So I've got a table here with the graph. So I like that Boom lets me combine these together. So I've got points that are associated with each point here on the table. And so if I wanna find the Y value here, I just plug in negative four for X. This comes out to, let's see, positive 16 minus 16, that's zero plus three is three. And then I can just plug that here on the graph. Same thing for this one. This one comes out to zero. And then I can just put each one that's assigned there. That. And again, like if I make a mistake and we don't put one in the wrong spot, when they go to hit submit, it's gonna kick back out the ones that are wrong. So I can see I gotta fix this guy here. Oop, right there. And then it shows, okay, you did it. The last step is you just draw that curve, connect it, and then students can fill that out on that worksheet and then keep going on to the next problem. So I hope that's helpful for you. Um, I think math, there's a lot of things that are similar to this where that you've got a complex process, say like, using the quadratic formula or things like that. I love that Boom Cards can just break it down in a step-by-step -step so it's not so overwhelming for students. Yeah, I think that's amazing and especially important for students who have different learning styles. So like for instance, if somebody's a visual learner um, and you only gave them a lecture, and they didn't have the chance to really do this and see it visually and mess with it themselves, they'd, they'd really be missing out. So this is wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, next we're gonna hand off to Michelle who's joining us straight from the classroom. Okay. <laughs> so we're looking forward to uh, seeing what you present. Let me share sound real quick in case there is a shared. Okay, perfect. Hey, everybody. Yep, I am. Can you see me okay? Yes, uh, we can. Okay. Um, and I think it shared the wrong screen. Let me try that one more time. I apologize. We Are see Zoom cards in the middle school classroom. Well, good then. Thank you. Um, so yes, I am in the classroom right now. It's my 19th year teaching. So, um, and I do regularly use Boom cards as just a part of my instruction. Um, just like um, Liesl said, like when they're as sub plans, all those same times, it works really well. I teach eighth grade as well as ninth grade physical science and um, was not familiar with these prior to teaching science. But if I had taught math, I could definitely, when I taught math prior, I could definitely see 
how great these just connect right in. For me, I love that they have that instant feedback. Um, teaching eighth graders when you have the different levels when it comes to physical science, not having as much background with that, um, them have, getting that chance to build that background knowledge through boom cards is really key. They have that time to um, gain that um, confidence in something simple like kinetic and potential energy. So application style questions for, um, for, for a topic that's more abstract to build that background knowledge, build that confidence before we get to maybe more of a lab setting with it or um, some higher, the more challenging questions. Um, so I like to use them a lot of times earlier in instruction, just as a step for them to make sure that they're ready for those next steps in instruction um, on a topic does help gamify. So they'd absolutely love getting points or trying to beat their best score and that kind of thing, depending on how we set it up for that, for how I'm using it in a lesson. And then of course it is such a good formative assessment since they do have an opportunity to be able to go in and redo a set of boom cards. I often encourage them, you know, this was, let's work together on this set together and retry it again on your own. So it gives them that chance to, um, for me to see where they are, see how they're doing, and then, um, go back and, um, re-attempt or improve so that they are stronger. I don't ever use them in a summative way, always as that formative piece to make sure that they are um, gaining what they need. Um, I have found that there are many different sets out there that do apply to eighth and ninth grade physical science that are already um, wonderful in, in the library um, for, boom learn, for boom cards. Um, one set that I came across was kind of a lifesaver for me. I used to have a lab or a uh, not a lab, but a, um, an instructional lesson that where they had cut out paper pieces for building ionic compounds with the charges. And there was tiny pieces of paper absolutely all over the room. And a lot of time spent with cutting out these tiny pieces of paper, baggies of them everywhere. It was just not exactly the most um, efficient learning lesson. Um, and so I uh, happened to come across that Kim Kate has a set of the same lesson using boom cards. So that takes that paper manipulative with all the cutting and all the storage, which I love sometimes manipulatives are great, but sometimes making it digital is just the exact answer you need. And in this case, it definitely is um, where they can take and slide the different um, ionic the pieces to the um, model uh, where they would go. And they, I, at the same time, also have the sheet that they can write it down. So just like um, Sarah shared, having that place to write it down as they work, then they can go back and just use this as those manipulatives, as those models. Um, once they see that they've built the correct uh, compound with sodium and oxygen, they can you know, identify the ratio that there's two sodium atoms to one oxygen and um, be able to write the formula and check their work and identify um, what, what they have built, the formula, just from those pieces. Um, by going from paper pieces to having it digital, the time it took, this that used to be like a three-day uh, event. It's now um, in one day, we have a ton of background knowledge built and understanding of how to write a chemical formula. So that one, there's a lot of, she had so many really great um, pieces and slides for helping build that understanding. So that was a game changer for me. Um, I have made my own sets as well, taking things that would have been uh, a standard worksheet where we're just reading a graph or identifying uh, solubility um, on a solubility curve graph or identifying if it's saturated, unsaturated. I was able to um, move those into boom cards, which again is that key way to make it um, an easy set to use. Here was, there it is. Um, so students can then just read that graph and then answer the question. And it went from being a, a worksheet that's um, not, 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 not that exciting to having that instant feedback and that um, knowing that we're on the right track. Um, for on this one, seeing how much uh, KNO3 would dissolve in um, 100 grams of water at 60 degrees Celsius, they get used to reading the those graphs and identifying what is the, um, Whoops. Whoops. and they can hear all those sound effects and feedback. So there you go. Um, I'm trying to get ahead to one of the cards where I have it for saturated and unsaturated. So they can do the same things. It would have been a separate section on a worksheet and then have that instant feedback on that. Again, something I would use early in the lesson to build that background knowledge. Um, so at 50 degrees, what would form um, 
what kind of solution would you have if you had 80 grams of KNO3? So going over to 50, up to the 80, and seeing that we are on the line. There we go. So it is a saturated solution. Um, this skill, it, it was one that I, I had originally done it through a worksheet and then went back and graded and found that we had a lot of mistakes and then we'd have to go back and reteach. By having it, that instant feedback it, and ability for them to know as they're working, if they understand that skill was just really big. And um, I don't, a lot of these are chemistry today, but there's tons of things that relate to physics that have a lot of um, just more of vocab and building that abstract understanding of the vocab before we go into application of the concepts was really big. But with chemistry, there's just so many pieces where it's just practicing to make sure we have that skill down, like identifying subatomic particles. This is another set um, that I've used um, for that. And again, on this one, a worksheet going along with it where I have them also draw the Bohr model. So they have, the, they know their numbers are right before they're drawing the Bohr model on their paper. So that would have been one way that I would use um, this kind of set in my classroom. Um, so I've found that there's so many in the library that are effective and easy to use and able to um, be used at the middle and high school level for physical science, but um, really just it's for me it has been the best tool for taking things that would be a difficult manipulative to work it with to something easy to manipulate and check self check and having that instant feedback as they're working so they can record an answer that they know is right and then draw the Bohr model from there or whatever that next step would be. Well, I guess looking at your presentations, I have a quick question for all of you guys. Um, and that is how, how do you think about boom cards helping with equity? Because for example, when I see um, some of the materials that you're teaching, they're relatively complicated and not every student has a parent at home that can help them or an older brother or sister at home that can help them with their homework when it's uh, higher levels of science or math. So how, how do the boom cards help bridge that gap? Michelle, do you want to start out? I can, yes. I was going to say that um, with, with being able to, I typically use them in the classroom. If I'm not there, it would be during a sub plan where they may have a peer they could ask for help with. Um, but since it's usually coming along with right after some previewed instruction, um, they, having that instant feedback is that tool that's the key for it help building that on them, the ability to know that they're on the right track without necessarily having um, someone come and check or help them or get them guide them the next step. And if I can see that they're struggling, it, it alerts me that I need to meet with that student, have a smaller instructional time with them, small group time, and really build that understanding before they continue. Okay, that's great. Um, did either of you, Sarah or Liesl, have anything to add? Sure. Um, uh, that's part of the reason I like to add in those like le lesson cards or put, I try to put like hints or um, examples. So I try to have my decks be like a combination of not just questions, but like things that will help them along the way if they're stuck. Um, and a lot of times I'll have like a free lesson on my website that will go with that deck of boom cards. So I think that's helpful for students too, to have an, an additional resource. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think for me, like Michelle said, that instant feedback, so they immediately know whether or not they're on the right track. So they don't waste an hour doing a worksheet and they completely missing the whole idea. Um, that I think is really, really useful. And I think they also appreciate that, that they're not going to waste their time because let's face it, teenagers and their time, it's precious. <laughs> so we don't want to waste their time. Um, and then if they see, and I can then see, like, actually they did try. It's not a just an excuse of, I didn't understand, I didn't know what to do. I can see, yes, they've actually gone through these, they really struggling, or yes, you tried one and decided you don't know and just gave up. Um, so there's no getting away from it. <laughs> like the, the information is there for us to see, um, to help them. And I think that's great. That's great. So we have a question from Tara, which is for, Kate, or for Sarah. Um, with Kate's math lessons, how complicated is it to set up your graph questions? So, um, and a kind of a piggyback question off of that, have you ever found problems that are too complex to break down into parts for boom cards? 
Um, so as far as making them, it really what takes me the most time is just figuring out the layout and what I want it to look like. The actual, like it's really not that hard. I mean, the the points are just circles. So I you know add in a circle as an image and you make it movable. Like so that that part is pretty easy. Um, I make my own graphs. You can you know do that in PowerPoint or another outside program and then just put it in as an image. Um, there are some that I found are a little bit too complicated, like if you're graphing, um, you know, more complex curves, you know, the, so the the final step, you could see that I had to just, you know, finish the rest of the curve for them because that part they can't just draw on there with boom so that that parts, you know, a little bit different, but for the most part, I can break it down into smaller steps. Yeah. And possibly breaking it down into those smaller steps might help you um, to imagine it from the student's perspective, like what really yeah. are the steps that are important. So yeah, yeah, because you don't, you've got some kids that, you know, if they're misunderstanding the first step in a complex process, you know, the rest of it is off. And so, you know, when you're, you're grading this big problem, you want to give partial credit. Well, it's like, you know, you have to redo all the steps from their mistake to see if they you know, knew what they were doing for the rest. So I like that boom cards, they can catch those mistakes much faster. So we did get another question from Tara asking, can you use Google Slides instead of PowerPoint? Um, so if you make things in an external program, do you have the option to use different programs like Keynote, Google Slides, other things? Oh, to just create the actual images? Yeah, I mean, you can create an image in any program you want. Um, yeah, and then you just insert it into the boom cards as an image. So yeah, whatever program you're familiar with and comfortable with using, I'd say use that one. Great. And uh, Liesla, I guess this question is for you. Did, can you describe the how you knew you were really getting good at making boom cards? There's a little bit of a learning curve. And so um, how did, can you describe that experience of going from a complete novice to feeling comfortable making cards? Um, yeah, it, it, I've been doing it for quite a while. I think I joined quite early on a couple of years ago. Um, and it, yeah, there's a bit of a learning curve, like any new software or program that you're using. But I guess it's trial and error. Um, and I'm very stubborn. So <laughs> when I get stuck on something, I'm like, I will figure this out. <laughs> I, I guess it's a scientist in me. Um, so it does get easier. And I do realize like if I don't make some decks for a while and I go back, I'm like, okay, let's just go through all of this again. But it comes back. It, I think it's very intuitive. Um, the whole platform, um, how it's set up. Yeah, I find it very intuitive. Um, and then obviously there's all the tutorials and things available, which is amazing. So if you don't know, someone somewhere has an answer for it. So you just, just go to the Google, I'll find it there. And yeah, so I think it's a very... Um, user-friendly platform. So if you haven't tried making a deck, go for it. It's really a lot of fun. And once you start adding all the fun bits to it, it yeah, it, you can spend a lot of time on it. <laughs> um, if you have any, if any of the attendees have any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A box. Uh, we'd love to answer your questions. I have one for Michelle from the perspective of a teacher or a buyer. Um, what is it like looking for middle school content in the store? What areas have you found a lot of content in? And are there opportunities for people who might want to publish where you need more content in the middle school area? That's a good question. A lot of the, uh, like the next generation science standards overlap between elementary to middle. So I've found sets that are almost geared more towards elementary. So I can use since um, in our state, we they haven't maybe been exposed to some of the things since earlier on. I can use that as a preview. Um, or it, once I sometimes find things that are better and it's more um, for the eighth grade, but I may have to hide some slides because there might be something that's reaching and towards high school level. So um, I just have to um, use that hide slide tool sometimes if I, especially in the chemistry side of things, when I find things that are um, hitting my ninth grade physical science, um, I tend towards having to find chemistry sets, not rather than just to that high school physical science level. So it doesn't always, it's sometimes too far and I do have to hide, be willing to hide slides and just have a smaller set. 
Do you ever have students who are so advanced that you end up giving them more advanced materials? Yes. So I've been able to find where you can, how I can assign it and then hide and unhide and, and uh, depending on the student and how, I, what their needs might be for it. Um, but as far as your question about what areas are, is, could there be an opportunity for, um, I would definitely say that that eighth and ninth grade level content of physical science, you tend to have to either find something that's more geared toward elementary and then just try to use it as a back building background or reviewing or finding something that's high school and then leveling it down. So there is, there is that, there is a big area that is, there's not as many sets created, but especially on the physics side of physical science. Um, there's a lot that's more geared towards the vocabulary, but maybe not the application of the concept. Newton's laws and um, electricity and magnetism, but at that eighth, ninth grade level of content, um, there, that is an area that there's not as many sets for. So I have another question for Sarah, um, because you put a lot of kind of lesson type content into your boom cards, but what's an area um, where boom, what where you always will need the teacher? Can can you describe that a little bit? Like, what are some of the things that um, you're always always going to need the connection between this teacher and the student in order to to transfer? Yeah, I mean, of course, we're always going to need teachers, and I kind of think about it. Um, I think back to as a child, I would ask my dad for help. And he would explain it one way and I didn't get it. And so he would explain it again louder. Um, <clears throat> and so with boom cards, you know, I I can put one explanation on there, but if they if that doesn't make sense to them, you know, they really do still need a teacher to, you know, try a different method, try a different way to explain it, um, give another example. So, you know, we need teachers to help us out. I, I'm doing my best, but I, you know, I'm not gonna have an explanation that makes sense to every kid. Um, and here's a question for Liesl. Do you ever customize your content for your students at, at your school? Like uh, you said you teach at Montessori. So I'm assuming you have kind of smaller class sizes. And since they're demanding content and you're making the content just for them, do you ever like put their pictures in it or something silly like that to, to keep them excited? Oh, they would kill me if I told her that. <laughs> Yeah, no, like I said, we are work. Um, very lucky. We we got very very small classes. I think my biggest class at the moment is nine students for my grade ten chemistry. Um, so very small groups. I I teach them for three years, so I get to know them really really well, and they become quite demanding. They will come to me and like, okay, I need to revise this topic. There are no boom cards for that, and I'm like, okay, fine, that will be my weekend job then to sort that out. Um, um, but I, yeah, no, I, I won't use their pictures or anything like that. <laughs> they will never forgive me. Well, you can never sell anything right? with their pictures. So that's yeah. great. <laughs> no, 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 no. They know, like, if I'm going to make something, it's something I'm going to sell as well. So <laughs> they can't get too demanding. That makes sense. Um, did you ever have like a really surprising reaction to one of your sets of boom cards, like where it really helped? Uh, change somebody's perspective on a certain topic or uh, do you have um, any yeah, like I said earlier I've got this one student and she is incredibly intelligent she's probably in my 21 years one of the most intelligent students I've ever taught like just absolutely brilliant but when you see her like that's not what you would think because it's all the drama all the time and like just <laughs> typical 16 year old we, used, we always joke, she's like Elle Woods in Legally Blonde, because that's like the image she portrays. And then when you talk to her, you realize like, oh, wow, okay, there's a lot here. And so she's got like the nails done and everything. And she was actually pulling them off in class. She's like, I can't press the right button and I want to beat everyone else. So that for me was like, okay, wow, <laughs> that's actually amazing. Um, so yeah, just seeing that reaction and seeing the true child coming out and the excitement when they're learning is, is awesome. Yeah, that's that's pretty wonderful. Um, so, Michelle, I guess I have a question for you as you're getting your classroom set up for the new school year. <laughs> um, is there anything that you look forward to experimenting with this year that you haven't done in the past for secondary? As far like as in what context? I, I, any context. I'm just I'm curious about it doesn't have to be boom cards. I'm just curious about what you're looking forward to this school year. 
I was lucky to get a grant. So I have a lot of new science toys to play with that I'm very excited about. And as a science teacher, <laughs> that's always fun. So um, that is something I am very much looking forward to. And I have an opportunity to teach a group of students that I do know pretty well. So it's gonna be really exciting to have them this year. Um, but the um, but definitely those two pieces are gonna be a big fun thing. I, I get excited about new science toys. <laughs> Uh, there are a lot of materials that can take the students through different lab equipment and things like that. So hopefully you'll be able to explain all the new toys that you have to work with so that the students can keep them in good shape for years to come. <laughs> Any other closing thoughts? We're about out of time. Um, and I just want to thank you guys all so much for uh joining us and explaining how you're using boom cards in the classroom, how you're creating boom cards for secondary. This was really, really interesting. And I loved your examples. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now with the help uh, information so everyone can know exactly how to get help if they need it from boom. And then uh, we also send a follow up email so that everyone will be able to watch the recording. So let me share this with you guys really quickly. Um, and you guys feel free to share any final thoughts while I'm doing this. Can you see my window with the helpline? Okay, wonderful. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed these demo lessons with our wonderful presenters, Sarah Liesel and Michelle. Now, just a friendly reminder, please fill out the feedback form of two is going to be posting the feedback form right in the chat so you have access to that. Um, And we're always happy to help answer any questions. Again, this was recorded and you will receive the recording in your follow-up email. Please stay tuned for all the rest of the wonderful events in the symposium. The next one is going to be a session on autism and that's starting 10 minutes from now. Um, so you feel free to register and join that one. We also have a day full of exciting presentations tomorrow. And let's see, those are going to include uh, uh, special education, speech therapy, ELA, social studies, music, occupational therapy, AAC devices, um, foreign language, and a developer showcase with some of the newest and greatest things coming from the developers of Boom Cards. So we're sharing links for the full schedule tomorrow and for the session that's happening in 10 minutes. So thanks again and happy booming everybody. Have a wonderful day. And thank you so, so, so much to all our presenters.